In this video, we're going to talk about dilutions. So a lot of times, a solution will come in a stock bottle that has a fairly high concentration. So we can look over here. Let's assume this container is a one liter container, and you know, each of the little green dots is one mole. This would be an eight molar bottle of our chemical. Rarely do we want that super high concentration, though. The reason we would have a stock bottle that high is because that way you can ship a great deal of the chemical in only one container instead of needing large storage spaces. What we can do if we want a less concentrated solution, such as over here where I really want two moles in a liter, so I really want a two molar solution to be used, well we can just dilute the solution. If you put you know, a teaspoon of salt with a little bit of water, it's very salty. But if you then pour tons of water in, fill a gallon jug with that same small amount of salt, it doesn't taste as salty. It got spread out over more water. What I can do is I can actually move some of our solution over to our new container. I can get the amount of moles I want over and then just fill in the container with more new water. The moles that are inside will drift and spread out evenly, and I will have a new solution that is one liter in total volume with two moles inside of it. This is the idea of dilution. We transfer a little bit of the stock, highly concentrated solution into a new container and then dilute that with fresh water in order to create a lower concentration final container. Well, how do we go about finding that? Conveniently for dilutions, there's a simple formula. Molarity 1 times volume 1 equals molarity 2 times volume 2. This only is for dilutions. You can't use this to do stoichiometry in a reaction. You can only dilute a solution with this. But what it lets us say is if you know your target solution, so our second solution over here versus our first one. I knew I wanted to make a two molar solution and I knew I wanted to have one liter of it. Well, I took some of our original solution. There was chemical over here. I moved it and dumped it in our new container. Well, we know the original solutions concentration that was eight molar. What we don't know is how much did I need to transfer? I took one portion off the top, but what if we had taken a second portion? Or what if we had taken a third portion? How much of that first container did we need to move over? So the volume that we don't know is the amount we need to remove of the stock solution in this case. Well, I can solve that volume. Volume 1 is going to equal 2 molar times 1 liter divided by 8 molar. My molars will cancel out. I'll find that volume 1 is 0 0.25 liters. I needed a quarter of a liter. And if we think about our numbers, well, 2 moles is 1 quarter of 8 moles. So I needed to get one-fourth of all the material, and so I had to pour out one-fourth of all the volume. 0.25 liters is one-fourth of one liter, so this is why we need that volume. Dilutions work for any time you want to take a stock, highly concentrated solution and make a lower concentration. You can't easily concentrate because you can't add more water and have it get more concentrated. It will get more dilute. You would have to remove water. And while you could evaporate water away, this is a time-consuming and energy-intensive task and often can damage whatever molecules in there. Bringing up something dissolved in water to boiling, if it's a less stable organic drug, might well destroy that molecule. And so generally all we can do is dilute to lower concentrations rather than higher. Let's try an example for it. In this case, let's run a problem where I have a stock solution of 0.75 molar sodium chloride. I want to dilute it down quite a bit to 
And I don't want a whole lot. My final volume, I just need to be 250 milliliters. So the final solution, we just want a little bit to maybe dissolve a chemical or do a reaction. But I have a big stock solution to start with. Give this a try and see if you can find what volume of the original solution we need. All right, well, if you're back, if I want to do M1V1 equals M2V2, well, I know my final state. I want to make a 0 0.042 molar solution, and I only want 250 milliliters, so 0 0.250 liters. I know my original molarity, 0 0.750 molar. What I need to know is what amount of that stock solution do I need to pour out? We'll find that volume one is 0 0.014 liters, or about 14 milliliters. So you need to pour 14 milliliters of the original stock solution into a container and then add enough water to bring it up to 250 milliliters total. So why does this work? Well, let's think about it for a minute. Let's just look at our final container. I have 250 milliliters, so 0 0.25 liters of 0 0.042 molar NaCl. If we just asked how many moles, well, I could take my volume, 0 0.250 liters, I have my concentration in moles per liter, so in one liter of the solution is 0.042 mole of the chemical. We would find that our final container, if I had 250 milliliters of 0.042 molar, would have 0.0105 moles of our chemical. The whole idea for our final container is where did all those moles come from? They came from the stock solution we poured out some amount of a chemical. So I had some moles in here. It had liquid. We pour some amount of it out until we have the right number of moles for our final container. Which means what I need to find, I need to know what volume of our original container would have had this many moles. And so I can find that. If I know the moles I want in my first container, 0 0.0105 mole of NaCl needs to get poured out. Well, I need a ratio of moles of the chemical to volume of the solution. Well, we had that. It's molarity, moles per liter. It's a ratio. You can have the moles on the bottom and the liters on the top. It's in one liter, 0 0.750 moles. If there's a target amount of moles I want from my original solution, and I know the concentration, I can find what volume of the original solution would have that concentration. 0 0.0105 divided by 0 0.75 we will find 0 0.014 liters. The dilution equation really just runs us through this thought process. If we look at our right side, I have a molarity times a volume. Molarity is moles per liter times liters. You're really just solving the moles in that final container. On the left side, we're finding what volume will have that many moles. So whether we do this as one nice M1V1 equals M2V2 calculation, or we think of it as two separate components, we're really doing the same calculation. What moles are in our final container? What volume of our original container would give us that many moles? And this is the idea of dilution and how we can go about calculating it.